one half of Proud and Powerful Ortiz. What do you mean, Proud and Powerful? Uh, that's no longer, bro. You gonna keep throwing that shit in my face? I kind of saw the writing on, on the wall that uh, I no longer was gonna have a tag team partner. At one point, me and Bryce were tearing up. Stay ready and you don't have to get ready. Like, no, what? I'm tweaking it, sorry. Cause this is your platform, I'm not gonna embarrass you. Yo, what's good, it's your boy Isaiah Cassidy, brother Zay, Zay, and I'm here with one half of Proud and Powerful Ortiz. What do you mean Proud and Powerful? Uh, that's no longer, bro. You gonna keep throwing that shit in my face? That's fucked up. I mean, that's how I know you by, like, EYFBO. No, I'm just Ortiz now. So, so like, anything, you could say one half of Eddie and Ortiz. Oh, right? yeah, that is, that's your boy, that is yeah. your boy, that is your yeah. boy. Well, like I said, we eating some good food. I got first watch, I'm sorry. He got his meal, where you got your meal from, my boy? Oh, I got a factor meal. I'm not I'm not sponsored by them or anything, but Ethan Page does have a discount code. So uh, go check out Ethan Page's vlog and he go hook it up. He actually did his own workout journey. Yeah, and, yeah. And yeah, he, he looks great. Caesar and he, he looks, looks amazing. But uh, factor was one of the, the things that kind of helped him achieve that goal. It's just uh, quick and ready to eat meals, man. And uh, it's not that expensive. And being that we travel every week, uh, it's cheaper than paying 60 bucks to eat at the hotel. Like I'm paying $100 and I'm getting 14 meals versus one meal is costing me $60. But yeah. That's good, man. Trying to be a body guy. Speaking of body guy. Yo. Were you supposed to do an interview like this of your of your um, transitioning, right? Mm -hmm. Of your transition. We kind of did. I never. We did. Um, did I release that video? Yeah, you did. I did. You okay, put bro. it on the vlog. Oh, okay, bro. Well, this this guy's memory. My bad. Yeah. Uh, by the way, first watch. If you're watching this, please sponsor me because every city I go to and it's available, I always get it. You got the million dollar bacon and you got my favorite drink of all time, the morning meditation. If you ever go to first watch, get this. The morning meditation. I promise you, I won't steal your room. Anyways, hell yeah. So, wait, what are you eating right now? I'm eating pork, um, wild rice, green beans, and mushrooms. Mm, mm. Oh, that let me read it off the box per se. Garlic cream shredded pork with wild rice, green beans, and braised mushrooms. Mm, that does look good. That does look good. With immaculate macros. I just uh, got a nutritionist, so I'm like. I'm I'm on my road to, to building some muscle. See uh, what I yeah. can do. You look great. Thank you. You look great. So let's I appreciate you. Let's talk about that journey. Yeah. To looking great. Okay. Talk about, you know, from the beginning, you know, when you was kinda big and now how you look now. What made you want to change your body? Uh -huh. What made you get serious? Uh -huh. And what's the steps you took to it? Because I'm pretty sure there's a lot sure. of people that you inspired that want to change their body. So explain to my peoples how you did it i'll keep it short because i know how you are if i if i talk for too long then he's gonna be like i right, hurry hurry it up mm -hmm. he's done that to me before what a rude interviewer no um, no talk, talk, your <laughs> shit, talk your shit uh man it, it it was a lot of factors but um these are the the, the major points I, I i was definitely depressed at the time this was like height of the pandemic and like i i gained weight i remember like we were off of tv for a couple of months not we, no one was really wrestling except for like a small bubble that was in Atlanta mm. when they were doing it at uh, Cody's and uh, Nightmare Factory, Cody and QT school. And um, I was just like sitting home for two or three months and I just like was eating ice cream every night. What kind of? Haganaz. Haganaz. What flavor? Pistachio Ooh, that's uh, and uh, um, uh, Oreos. Uh, not Oreo, um, cookies and cream. My bad. I don't mm. know why I said Oreos. Cookies and cream. But man, I just like, I gained a lot of weight. Like I blew up like super fast. And like during that time, like I didn't realize that I was like depressed. Like I was still doing and socializing, but like my habits were, were had me in a rut. Uh, and also mentally, I just was like feeling sorry for myself. So I was at a low at that moment in time. And then like right when the pandemic was like lifting up, restrictions were lifting up. Uh, I was in New York and I had visit a, a friend was visiting from out of town, uh, Vishali. Uh, she came and she gave me David Goggins' first book, You Can't Hurt Me. Mm. And um, she just gave it to me out of nowhere. It wasn't my birthday, it wasn't anything. She was just like, yo, I read this and I think uh, uh, this made me think about you. Like, you know, read it. And uh, honestly, with that and like multiple things going on in my life and I kind of saw the writing <clears throat> on, on the wall that uh, I no longer was gonna have a tag team partner. Uh, that's me shooting from the hip and being real. Like I knew even back then, like uh, me and Santana's relationship was already on a, a on a decline. So I was just like, what am I gonna do? Am I gonna just sit here and feel sorry for myself or am I gonna do something about it? And um, 
a big uh, thing that uh, through everything I got, one of the, the biggest quotes was, uh, I forgot where I heard it from first, was just control what you can control. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? Accept nature for what it is. It's a very stoic belief. But you can't change nature sometimes. You have to accept it and go with it. So what can I control? I can control me. So I just like started to grind and then I, I, I just, I did it the wrong way at first. I just, I just wanted to lose weight so fast and I just like, I basically starved myself and I tortured myself. I did intermittent fasting, but then I did more uh, um, research on nutrition and just, you know, just educate myself. Cause yeah. it, I, I was just a bro workout. I was just like, oh, let's do some chest. Let's run a little bit and uh, eat some protein. You know what I mean? Have a protein shake. But my nutrition was always lacking. Uh, and then, yeah, I just educated myself more. I, I, I did it. I grind it down. Um, I'm still learning because as I we opened the video, mm -hmm. I just got a nutritionist because I, I hit a point of diminishing returns. Like, I, I, I plateaued. And, uh, yeah, I'm still learning now. This mm -hmm. is a journey for the rest of my life. I'll probably change up the way I'm eating now maybe in five years. Who knows? You know what I mean? Uh, I just went in with the mentality that I was just like, I want to change and I want to be different. Plus, I love professional wrestling. And I he wanted does. to do, does. I do a lot, more than I should. Uh, and um, I just was like, how do I be the best professional wrestler ever? And I look back on all the great opportunities, all the legends that I've got to step in the ring. And one of my biggest regrets was like, man, if I had this mentality that I had now, if, if I... It was in the type of shape that I was now. I could have took more advantage of those opportunities. But instead of me looking back and just looking in that regret, I know I'm going to have further opportunities. Like today, I'm wrestling Brian hey, Danielson hey. <laughs> and Let's Claudio. Let's talk about it. Yeah. Let's talk about so, it. And, it. And it's just like, yeah, this is what I've been working for. You know what I mean? Sure. Like, stay ready and you don't have to get ready. Absolutely. Dennis Stamp, baby. Absolutely. Yeah. What was, when was the first time you saw a difference in your body? Like, what did you start doing to see a difference in your body? Like, your cardio, change your workout, your diet. What was the moment where you was doing something and you said, okay, this is what I got to keep doing? What was that moment? I was living in New Jersey at the time. And then, luckily, my apartment building had a, a gym. So, I was able to still work out. I didn't have to try to find a gym or whatever. And I had a little... <coughs> excuse me. <coughs> I had a, one of those doorway pull-up bars in a dip bar in my crib because that's all I could really fit at the time. So I always hated pull-ups, always hated pull-ups. It was my biggest weakness. So I was just like, I'm gonna do pull-ups every single day, which is mm -hmm. bad advice because I was cooked and I was mm -hmm. a lot of the days, but I forced myself and I, I almost tortured myself, but that's not the way to do it. I found that out through like my own trials and tribulations mm -hmm. for myself. But any advice out there, no one will tell you to completely redline yourself because then the next day you're not gonna be able to perform. But I forced myself to perform the next day, no matter what, because I was just like, I was just angry. I just didn't want to be in my body anymore. Yeah. I, I mean, I have major body dysmorphia. I still do. Every wrestler has uh, yeah, body dysmorphia. for sure. I mean, we uh, uh, we're in a very um, uh, 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 vain it's, business. It's a cosmetic business. A lot of people cosmetic say. business. There, there's the word I was looking for. Yeah. <laughs> so you know, looking different and not looking average is kind of a part of our our spiel. You know what I mean? Especially circa 1990s WWF, you know what oh. I mean? It was all bodybuilders coming out of like the cartoon era. Like it was just all yoked up dudes, you know mm -hmm. what I mean? And that's our our vision of a pro wrestler, right? So, you know, uh, I just started with pull-ups and I was just like, I'm gonna do pull-ups and I was just gonna attack my weaknesses and stop making excuses. And that's what I did. And then honestly, me, just my back getting bigger, my posture was fixed better because just my back muscles were stronger and I was able to hold up better and I didn't have like this I used to walk around like this just like a gorilla all day just like this front hunch because all I did was bench I would do maybe body weight squats and run that's all I did I never stretched I didn't really do mobility stuff and I always felt good in the ring and uh uh what helped was also being a part of a tag team because I had somebody to cover up that uh you know, I can get rest in between tags and whatever sure, like that. Sure. And then when you do something for so long, you, your body gets conditioned for that, mm -hmm. right? So I was conditioned for tag team wrestling. But then when I switched over, uh, oh, go back. I'm sorry. To answer one of your questions, I actually wrestled Cody right before the pandemic. Yes. Uh, I and I, I was probably towards my fattest at that point. And uh, uh, I remember being cooked that match. And that was another eye-opening moment for mm -hmm. me. But uh, to answer your second question, it was pull-ups. I, 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 I did pull-ups 
I ran, I did cardio, I did the elliptical, and I just was just, I did other stuff, full body workout, but my main primary focus every single day was pull-ups. Okay. And I did 25 pull-ups, and that was a lot for me at yeah. the time. Now I could bust up pull-ups, no problem. But it was set to five. And I'm talking about, like, when I first started, I couldn't even get above the bar without kipping, without, yeah, you know, the yeah, swing, yeah. The, the CrossFit swing. And, uh, yeah, I just started with that. And then, honestly, fairly quickly, uh, uh, that combined with intermittent fasting, I lost the weight super fast, but too fast, mm. right? I, I, I was losing weight, like, it was dropping off of me. But I was losing muscle mass on top of that. And then when I started noticing that, I started eating more. Then I switched over to more keto and carnivore, yeah, yeah. kind of. Not really. I don't like to use those terms because they have, like, um, uh, it implies that I eat a certain things. But I was mainly eating proteins and, like, fruits. I didn't <clears throat> mess with grains or bread or stuff like that. And, and potatoes were the, were the main thing. So I did that for a really long time. And then I was only eating, like, two meals a day. But then my workouts started intensifying, intensifying, and then I got great results, like, yeah. on, and I was doing that, what, probably, like, a year and a half, two years, okay. where we would be out, and you would be, la, la, let's go this, and I'm like, nah, I can't eat nothing, or yeah. whatever, yeah, I remember yeah, one yeah. time, we went out and had this fancy dinner in Toronto, in Toronto? Uh -huh. yeah, <laughs> fancy dinner in Toronto, <laughs> this guy saw Drake, <laughs> Yo. or he didn't see Drake, <laughs> Yo. Yo, so let me tell you a story, right, it's a bunch of wrestlers, right, um, we go out to this restaurant in Toronto. It's called Something Harbor. Fancy. Man. Mad bougie. I'll tell you this. It was the best restaurant experience I ever experienced in my life. It was all. Shout out to Julian. Julian's boy hooked it up. Ethan Page. Sorry, Ethan Page. Shout out Ethan Russell. Page. Ethan Page. Ethan Page. His boy hooked us up. And like I said, best restaurant experience I ever experienced in my life. When I tell you... We got to the place like around, we got there pretty late because it was after the show. It was a nice fancy restaurant. I'm telling you like, they brought out everything. Mm -hmm. They brought out like, it's a bunch of us and they brought out like a whole bunch of steak, Drish. mashed potatoes, shrimps, macaroni and cheese. All amazing. Everything. And then they're like, oh, what you want to drink? Everybody getting, well not everybody, but you know, there's people there getting drinks and I got a drink of course. And um, then, I, I thought it was over. They came out with dessert. I'm talking chocolate cake. I'm talking ice cream. I'm talking all types of cakes. When I tell you, this man did not take... Yeah. He did not take a bite of anything that was there. Holy shit. The amount of food that was there, and he did not take one bite. I regret it right now, this day. I regret it 100%. But back then, I was so obsessed with just not eating outside my window. Exactly. Like the anxiety of me getting weight again and getting back to that state that I was before I got here, it, that anxiety is my uh, uh, the thing that, that, that keeps me grounded, you know what I mean? But I just didn't trust myself back then, bro. I felt like if I did that one day, then it was going to, like, do my whole life. Oh, oh. I've been doing so good for so long. All right, one day is not going to do anything. One day turns into five days. Five yeah, days yeah, turns yeah. into yeah. five months. And before you know it, I've been eating like shit for a year. Yeah. So now it's different. Now I can trust myself. You know what I mean? I, I was just hanging out with friends the other day, and then it was late at night. It was like 1, 2 a.m. And they were like, oh, you want a Corona? I said, I better. I'll have, I'll have yeah, one yeah, Corona. Yeah, like, yeah, I'm yeah, not yeah, going to do bad. Yeah, 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 yeah. like shit. But it's, it was learning to trust myself. That was a huge, huge uh, step forward for me. But it took me so long to get there, like over two years. I was just obsessed. And I was like, no, I can't eat outside my window. No, I can't try this. No, I won't try a little bite or something because it's not in my window. Yeah. So in hindsight, yeah, knowing what you know now, what would you have Bro, I would, I, I, at that day, I would have just ate everything. I would, I'm not like, I would have had splurged and just yeah. ate, uh, like gorged myself, but I would have tried everything. You know what okay. I mean? Okay. Within reason. Now I trust myself. Now I know if I do that one night and I'll yeah. have a little bit more calories than I'm normal, I know that I'm going to put in the work for the rest yeah, of the week. Yeah, and yeah, yeah. I'm fine. You know what I mean? One day is not going to do anything to you. It's just back then I couldn't tell myself that. For I just sure. mentally I wasn't there. Sure. So like even that day, like um, I was chilling. We was all chilling. Oh, yeah, the Drake. And then <laughs> my boy, my boy uh, Aubrey. Oh, I know him as Drake. But my boy Aubrey, like he saw me from a distance and I'm like... Yo, what's good, Brody? 
So like I know he was with his peoples and I was with my peoples. So basically like I didn't want to like you know like interrupt what he was doing and he wouldn't interrupt what I was doing. So we just kept it cold. Like yo, what's good, brody? I bet you good. I, and that was really it. Because this is your platform. I'm not going to embarrass you. We'll go with that story. That's no, this this is an open space. So if you nah, got to say, nah, nah, so nah, if you nah, want to, nah. if you want to fabricate what happened, just go ahead. Nah, I'm not going to do you like that. You're my boy. I'm not going to embarrass you in your own place. No, but if you want to fabricate what I just said, fabricate. Yeah. So you you saying on God? That's what happened. Look in the camera and say it. Why you have to bring God? Ah, uh, no, no, exactly. but why you have to bring God? Because he's always in watching. I know, but God has nothing to do with this. It's me, you. And God Jake. has nothing to do with life. No, he does. But our conversation right now, he has nothing to do with it. Can you leave okay. him out of it? All right. Can you leave my Lord and Savior out of this conversation? Right, we'll leave him out of it. Thank you. Anyways, you're facing Brian Danielson and Eddie Kingston. No, what? Oh, I'm tweaking. Sorry. <laughs> you watch the show, bro. Yeah. Oh shit. Oh, look. Yes. I know you watched it because my match was announced during yeah, your yeah, attack yeah, yeah, match. Yeah, no, no, no. I, no, I was tweaking. I was tweaking. <laughs> You're facing Eddie King. Fuck! Yeah. Yo, listen. It's Take er three. It's early right now. Chill out. Chill out. It's early. Let's go. Do your cool editing skills. Oh, yeah. I'm going to edit the shit out of this. Look. You're facing Claudio. There it is. And Brian Danielson. Mm -hmm. And you're teaming up with your homeboy. Mm -hmm. Matter of fact, before we get into that match, talk about your relationship with Eddie Kingston. The mad dog. How did y'all become friends? How did y'all become cool? How did y'all become like this? Like this? Locked in. I don't know. Locked in. Locked in. I like that better. Locked I in. I don't know if I like this. Like, now, this means like y'all tight. This means locked in. Okay. So how did y'all become tight and locked in? Um, Man, uh, we both have the same mentor. Homicide, man. Mm, shout out D, yo. D. Um, and uh, I, we all from New York, obviously. But Eddie was already kind of like... Or you know, 18 years at that point, already established all over the indies. And then when we got cooler with D, I remember one of the first times we were on the same show as Eddie, D had, you know, messaged Eddie and was like, yo, look out for them. They're my boys. Mm. So just alone on that, just us getting the, the okay from D, from from um, the big boss, uh, I, I we, we were kind of already destined to be tight. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. But then... Uh, just developing over time, we just develop a, 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 a an actual friendship, man. And Eddie is just like, yeah, dog, this is one of my best friends. I love him. Uh, but uh, yeah, we just develop over time, just organically, man. It yeah. just it organically happened, not because D put in the word, but it's just we have similar interests. We both love professional wrestling. We both love the same type of wrestling. We have similar sense of humors, yeah. and it's just we clicked right away, man. Like it just it was easy. Yeah, it was no work involved. I knew Eddie when I just started training, like I was 14 years old. It's like we're all you connected. House of Glory? Yeah, it's like we're all connected somehow, so. It's that New York Mafia. Yeah, his trainer is Homicide. My trainer is Amazing Red. And one, you know, of, one of my trainers is Homicide. Yeah. I wouldn't say I've trained with him a lot of times. So I wouldn't call him my Oh, no, your trainer, trainer. Your, your trainer is um, SAT. Yeah, at, at one point in my training. My first trainer ever was Earl Cooter, huh. but... Very early on, Danbury and Grim Reaper mm. kind of took me under their wings, showed me a lot when I first broke into the business. Mm -hmm. And then, like, two, three years of me doing that, we then went to the SAT school. Mm. And me and Santana started tagging, and then we started going to the SAT school. And that's when we first started tagging. That was, like, over a decade at this point. I knew Eddie since I was 14. He used to come into my training school. He was really tight with uh, Amazing Red. As you know, Amazing Red is also from New York. So just... Them being from New York, you know, was already they was already locked in, and he would come to training from time to time. And they all broke in around the same time. That's why, basically, yep. yeah, yeah, yeah. And to see what he's done, everybody that knew him throughout the years, sure. ever seen the man do a promo, ever seen him like have a match that he really puts his all into, yeah, and he just gets people to believe in him, man. Uh, absolutely, and yeah. I and that's that's something hard to do. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, it really is. It's, a, it's something hard to do. You believe what he says. You believe I, yeah, what he does. I believe does. everything that he does. You know what yeah. I mean? And I and I inspired one day to be yes. that good. The point I was trying to get at was, you know, it's surreal for me. I'm not as close to him as you are. Mm -hmm. How surreal is it for you to see him where you met him versus him now doing all this incredible stuff? It's awesome, bro. It doesn't bring me any I don't mean to dick ride like that, but I'm just No, like, that's oh. cool. No, I know, but like, I just like throw it out there. Like, I'm not dick riding or anything. But like, I, I give props to my boys and shit. Yeah, I'm giving, I'm giving props to him. Man, it was just, it was awesome. Like, uh, uh, I was watching him versus Mock for, for the finals on the pay-per-view. 
And it was just, it's sick, bro. It's like so awesome to see him. Let's go back first Grand Slam. He main evented with Mox. Homicide came out. I think they main evented Rampage that night. Yeah, the last, last match of the night. It was, it was like a big deal. Just to see that first Grand Slam was wild. We, it was we, like, we faced. Yeah, we yeah, faced we actually wrestled yeah, each other. Yeah, yeah, we faced yeah. that night. Just like seeing it full circle, like seeing the type of reaction that he got there, and then fast forward to him wrestling Mox and winning a title, being three-time champ, like super champ. Yeah. This guy, <laughs> the first two, two and a half years in a AEW was just like, would lose every big match, bro. Mm -hmm. Every big match, yep. you know what I mean? And uh, to see him now where he's come, he's on a truck, yeah. you know what I yeah. mean? The company recognizes his uh, his star power, and then just, you can see it, man, every time he comes out. Other than Eddie Guerrero, where else do you hear, Eddie, Eddie? You bro, echoing through. Yeah. Since Eddie Guerrero, there hasn't been any other. Yeah. And now it's him. That, that, sure. that that's him, and it's it's awesome, bro. I can't like I can't help but smile, bro. Yeah, it's, 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 it's really dope. cool. It's, it's dope. I, I I will say a very uh, emotional moment I had. I remember I've said this on other podcasts, but I'll say it on your your deal. Um, uh, when he was wrestling Miro for the TNT Championship, yeah. I forgot what pay per view that. Was. I think it was like the opening match or something. And me and Bryce Remsburg were on the floor. We came out through the tunnel and we watched it on the floor. And when I tell you that. Like, when you watch something on TV, it doesn't do it justice. It don't. Being in a live crowd on the floor. It does not. I watched back the match on video, but being on the floor live and hearing the people go crazy for my boy, it yeah. was so cool, man. Like, at one point, me and Bryce were tearing up because it was just so awesome seeing the people react to, like... You know, someone that, that we know deserved this, that we know always had the potential to do this and is mm -hmm. finally getting his flowers. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? He's not one of those statistics where there's other people in professional wrestling, other people in the Indies where you're like, oh, this guy's going to make it. And then, then they disappear. You never see them again. You know sure. what I mean? Because of life or other things happen or they just didn't get their fair shake. But uh, that moment, I was just like, man, like, and Bryce has known him longer than me, but like, us looking at and kind of we look at each other with smiles. We shared a cool moment. It was uh, it's really cool. But that's just a cool story, just to add on to your question. That uh, man, that's my boy, man. I, I and and the fact that I get to team with him and like Thanks. yeah, and it's easy, man. And I just hope we continue to do it and we we we, we get to get more um, chemistry with each other. I'm, it's I'm, there. I'm, it was I'm, getting there. Yeah. We were doing it before he got his hernia. Mm -hmm. But, you know, we'll see what happens. I'm looking forward to it. Oh, we a tag team, so maybe we can wrestle each other. That's what I was about to say. I hopefully, you know, one day... You think you can handle this, bro? I hope so. Actually, I don't know. I, I know so. You say you've been... Oh, there you go. I, I like that so. confidence. I know so. It would be a good match. I, yeah. I faced Eddie once when he was in Mox. I'm going to blow you up. That bro. was cool. I promise you can't. I promise you can't. You think I can't? I know you can't. Ooh, hey, I like the hey, confidence. Hey, I've been doing my, some connections. And I believe him. I believe him. And I know you can't. No, I believe that oh. you believe you believe in yourself. Oh, okay, yeah, I do yeah. believe in myself. But I know I'm gonna blow you up. <laughs> okay, let's see. Let's go. Friendly competition. Friendly competition. You can't get wrong with friendly competition. Nah, that's cool. You can fight each other and still say friends. You see sure. fighters do it all the time. For sure. They punch each other in the face and then they hug each other afterwards. Absolutely. It's wild. Now, question for you: Since you're wrapping this up, what's some of your goals going forward? Man, I will say goals going forward. I want to do an excursion in Japan and Mexico, like just to go trade. I just want to go for like a month or two and just go train with like just different people. Like uh, I've always prided myself on being able to wrestle every style. And I kind of want to go back to basics this year because uh, I feel like I'm still trying to find my new voice in professional wrestling. Uh, I want to learn Spanish fluently. Mm. I want to learn how to at least have basic conversational skills in Japan. Que paso? Japanese, excuse me, in Japan. In Japanese, que paso? Uh, Nada. Tu, tu bien? Si. Estoy bien. <laughs> yo, yo entiendo, pero hablo mal. Mm, sí, yeah, sí, yeah, yeah. Sí, Do you sí. know what I just said? I'm cute. Yeah? I, nah, that's not what I just said. What you said? Where's your Dominican in you? Don't you got Dominican? In you? I do got Dominican. Uh oh, oh. Que, que la vaina tigre. Uh oh. Oh, tigre. You know? oh. Nah. He has, nada, no, he has nada, no idea what I'm saying. De nada, de nada. De nada. <laughs> de nada. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, man, and just, like, uh, get outside my comfort zone, man, and just, like, continue to do things in my, my, my uh, outside of wrestling life, you know, like, uh, just get better with um, managing my money, uh, investing in the real estate, 
all ventures that I'm kind of doing. I'm going back to school. Mm-hmm. Uh, what are you about to study? Uh, kinesiology, exercise science. Okay. Because okay. uh, I, I want to open up a, a, a gym slash wrestling school one day. Mm. And that's the goal. So uh, Be on the lookout for that. Yep. I, I, it might take a little while because I'm getting my degree. Hey. And I think me having my exercise science degree, uh, at least my master's, I don't know if I'm going to go for my PhD, uh, but definitely at least my goal is to get my master's in exercise science. And I feel like that'll set me apart from any other wrestling school. You know what I mean? Outside of the WWE developmental system, like where do you have like someone where is a strength and conditioning coaches, nutritionist that can give you all that? You know what I mean? It's not really it's, no it's school. Not a, it's re- yeah, no school really that I know of. offers that. And then maybe they do, but I just I want to do it differently. And I mm-hmm. have a, a goal in mind, and I'm not gonna say too much so people don't steal my idea. But you uh, say, yeah, you can't. Yeah, I mean that's that's just my goal going forward, and and uh, raise a stud. I have a son, and I just want to raise a stud. Shout out, I, shout out, Dylan, man. Yeah, I want to give him a, a better start than I had, and I had a pretty good start. No, no, no. Uh, um, no shade on my parents, uh, but yeah, I want to give an even better start. Last but not least, I know you inspire a lot of people by your body transformation. Mm-hmm. If you had to give them one piece of advice to leave with to start their fitness journey or anything in general, one piece of advice, what would you say? Who? Um, don't overwhelm yourself with so much information. There's so much information out there, right? There's so many different ways to cook an egg. Everybody has their own uh, method and and way of doing it, right? I'm not saying all these methods won't work, and maybe they will, but maybe that's not the the right choice for you. And the only way to do that is by just grinding it out. Do it. Make mistakes. Have common sense. Uh, Just get after it and do a little bit every day, man. Just baby steps. Like, Get out your comfort zone, but don't try to like go cold turkey. Some people go New Year's Revol- resolution, right? People do this all the time. I was one of them, right? They'll go, nah, I'm gonna get into shape. I'm gonna do this, and then midway through January, they're done. Mm-hmm. They lasted two weeks because you're going from one extreme to the other extreme, and that's not sustainable. You know what I mean? Unless you're a, a psycho, <laughs> you know what I mean? And and I was almost there for a little while. Like I went too hard in the paint. And I was almost setting myself up for failure, but I was just determined. I had that 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 thing that clicked in my brain, right? But not everyone's gonna have that. And other people respond to things differently. Per se, I, I told you about the David Goggins book. Mm-hmm. That didn't uh, um that didn't have the same effect that it had on me that it did for you, right? Mm-hmm. Not that you couldn't take away some lessons from that book, but you didn't have the same reaction that I did, right? So Whatever information you're looking up, there's so much information out there. So there's no, there's no reason to be um, ignorant. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? Do your research. Take what makes sense. Bruce Lee, take what makes sense to you and then leave the rest. And just try something. If that doesn't work, try something else. You know what I mean? But you got to give it a shot. Whatever it is. If it's fitness, if it's you're trying to start a business or you're going back to school or whatever it is. Whatever thing that you set out to do. Just be like, I'm going to attack in the middle of it every day. But start with five minutes. If it's five minutes, you know what I mean? And then eventually, in a year, you'll be like, oh, I'm do- I've been doing this for like five hours. I could do it for five hours, no problem. But start with 10 minutes a day, 15 minutes a day, whatever it is. Start changing stuff that you can control. If it's fitness, just be like, I'm going to walk more. I'm going to stop driving less. I'm going to walk when I can walk. Or during my lunch break, instead of sitting down and just gorging myself with fast food, I'm going to eat something a little he- uh, healthier. Maybe I'll do <clears> squats <throat> at work. You know what I mean? Or if I have enough time, I'm going to go to the gym uh, during my lunch break. It all depends. Everybody has a different schedule. Everybody has workarounds. If you don't have any time during the day, there are people that run Fortune 500 companies that still find time to run ultra marathons, bro. How'd they do that? When they're working like 18 hour days because they make the time. You just have to make the time and you have to take your fitness, your career, or whatever you're trying to do and make that priority. There's something about having singular purpose. And that's what I had for a really long time. But you have to know eventually you're going to get get to the peak of that mountain and you're going to have to find a new mountain to come up. You know what I mean? Don't rest on your laurels and just get after it a little bit every day, man. And my content... Uh, cheap plug. Yeah, I'm, I'm trying to give out information, just general information. 
I, I try to stick away from like telling people specifics because I don't want to be like, oh yeah, jump on this fad, try keto, try intermittent fasting and nothing like that. That That's not the answer. Those things help. Those, those uh, outlines to things, they do help. And some people might get tremendous results and some people it might not be for them. Just experiment, see what's for you and just change a little bit every day. And that's it. All right, you heard from the man himself. Be on the lookout for his wrestling school that may be starting soon. No, and also, no, I'll give it. I give it like five years, at least five years. That's my five-year plan. Oh, let's say five years. Okay, so in five years, be be on the lookout for. His <laughs> but in the meantime, be on the lookout for his content because he is dropping content soon I am. at his YouTube channel, which is not YouTube channel. I don't have a YouTube channel yet. It'll just be IG. Oh, it'd be Instagram. Ortiz underscore powerful. Ortiz underscore profile is going to be right here. Make It'll sure be like IG that. shorts and, and all that good stuff. Eventually, I'm going to start a YouTube page. I've just been lazy. I hate videotaping. Yeah, we know. We know. Yeah, I know. So, be looking for that. I appreciate you, my dog. You know? Shh. Honey. See y'all later. Sus, 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 s